but and the Model Y I think is maybe the ugliest car that's on the road. Um, <laughs> Thanks. No, I don't. I don't want that. It just look, it looks frumpy to me. It looks frumpy. That's I don't, the one I, don't, I drive. Like, damn it. I know it's yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah. So tell me. So walk walk okay. me through. Walk me okay. through this. So so in terms of superchargers on your app, you put your credit card information in, and then there's never. There's not even like a kiosk or anything. Whoa, like that whoa, whoa. So I got to give Elon my credit card information? <laughs> yeah. Hey, y'all. It's Dr. Know-It-All. Today, Farzad, Brandon from Car Questions Answered, and I got together. Believe it or not, Brandon is going to buy an EV, and he wanted to ask us a whole bunch of questions. And here are some answers to Brandon's most pressing questions. All right. So we got Brandon here, who's somebody that is looking to buy his first EV ever. And we have myself and John who are super familiar with the EV market. And Brandon has been covering the auto market for a long time. He loves cars, but this is his first EV. I probably already know the answer to this, but I'm going into the EV market. Is there a make that you guys would suggest over the other makes? I'm just <laughs> curious to know about this. Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. I was going to say Chrysler. I do think with Tesla specifically, one, one of the big ones that actually my wife and I really value is safety. Safety is uh, a big piece that's uh, related to Tesla that's not really talked about enough. Uh, Model Y, Model 3, Model S, Model X are some of the best, if not the safest cars on the road today. Uh, and it's not really talked about at all. So that for us is a huge one is safety. Go ahead, right. John. What do you have? Okay. Tag team. Hey, uh, so I would throw in the supercharger network next. And you, I know that Ford and other manufacturers are getting to the point where they're going to be allowed to use some of the superchargers, but they still have in the United States and the CCS adapter. So if you buy a used car, you're not going to get one with the new NACS adapter on it, which won't be sold by other manufacturers until 2025, at least. So you're always going to have this weird plug thing if you want to go on any kind of road trip or charge not at home. So I think that's a big thing. And that's also underappreciated. Um, I've talked to a lot of EV owners, including my neighbors, who have an Ionic. And they're like, wait, we can't go on any road trips because it just sucks. It takes like an hour and a half to charge up every time we stop. And it's like, no, it's just so with Tesla, it's way better. The supercharger network is a huge, huge advantage to it. Yeah, I think another one, too, that that doesn't get uh, covered I think, you know, on tech channels, it does, but it, maybe it's not super well known. But the infotainment system in a Tesla, I generally find to be a lot more responsive, a lot more intuitive. Now, the, the flip side is you won't have the buttons, right? Like other automakers like to have physical buttons in the infotainment. But if you're somebody who who likes tech and uh, appreciates a super smooth interface and easy easy to use interface and a and a company that likes to update yeah like a smartphone and a company that likes to update their software often which is another thing about the infotainment system is that it gets updated all the time that's another thing that Tesla has on other other automakers in my opinion they just are they just have a better ecosystem they're much more advanced they're tech first instead of what I think other automakers are more tech second and I will then, uh, I'll piggyback the OTA update is for everything, of course, not just the infotainment, yes. which is great. But I will also add the uh, the kind of elephant in the room, which is full self-driving. But even if you don't want to pay the 99 bucks a month to uh, to rent it, to subscribe to it, the autopilot software that's just the standard software is pretty damn good. I mean, it's lane keeping, it's traffic aware cruise control, and like real lane keeping, not like I've driven other cars that supposedly do that. And it doesn't really work, but you know, it'll actually do lane keeping and it really, it, it's basically a subset of Tesla's full self-driving. So it understands the world around it. So I, I would say that's also a huge advantage that Tesla has. And even if you don't want it today, tomorrow you might want it. And if right. you buy a Ford or a Volkswagen, you don't get it no matter what you just, you can't get it, but you know, with the <laughs> charging your credit card, 99 bucks and you get it, you know, with, with, yeah. with Tesla. So, and dog mode. Know, and if dog you have mode. dogs, dog, dog mode is a yeah. big one. Uh, what is dog mode? I've never, I haven't oh. heard of that. Yeah, that's, a, that's another one of the yeah. little known things. So when you have your car parked and say you're going into the store, you can turn on dog mode and it basically keeps the climate control at like say 72 while you're in the store so your dog doesn't cook. And it will have a, a message on the screen that says, my owner will be right back. The cabin temperature is 72 degrees. So if somebody goes up to the car, it's like, oh my God, there's a dog in here. They won't break your window. They'll read the message on the car. Right. And I'm really not decided between the really the three or the s i will say that i've thrown out the x because the price point i'm not going to be able to get into one um for that that price range mm -hmm. um 
<laughs> it just, I'm, I'm sorry. It just looks, uh, my wife and I went and looked at a few Teslas today and it just, I, we had this conversation. She thinks it looks fine. I think mm-hmm. it looks like a car that's been squished down is what mm-hmm. it looks like to me. Cause it's just too tall for how not long it is. And I, it's, I will uh, agree with you. It is less than ideal from the side. It looks good from the front. looks good from the back. Less than ideal from the side. Every couple months or so I'll check on values of used Tesla's just because I know eventually I was going to jump into this market and, and buy a used uh, Tesla at some point. Um, yeah. And it just surprised me when I started looking. I think I texted you like two weeks ago. I was like, Oh man, these things are cheap. I'm, I, I just, I'm just going to buy one. And, uh, and I started seeing that and it's just sim- like, like the market for the use side is, I don't, I won't say cratering, but it seems like it's very, very, very affordable uh, right now yeah. to buy a used Tesla. I don't know how yeah. much uh, battery is lost after hundred thousand miles. Those are things I don't, I don't know about a used Tesla. Right. Yeah, with with the Teslas, the, usually the, most of the degradation happens in the first fifty to eighty thousand miles uh, for for the battery. So it, it's kind of like this: it kind of has most of the degradation, and then as the life goes on, it it's, uh, it slows down a lot. Uh, after a hundred thousand miles, you probably lose somewhere between call it five and ten percent of of the total range of the battery uh slightly less slightly more depending on your habits uh how you charge it how long you leave it at 100 percent, so on and so forth uh so at, at what was it eighty thousand miles you said 70 000 yeah, miles 80, something like that Eighty thousand, mm-hmm. yeah. So if it's a long range, with say three hundred miles, you should still have at least two hundred and seventy miles of usable range uh, left right. in the Model S. Um, the one thing to keep in mind with a twenty eighteen Model S, which I'm going to check now, uh, versus say I'm guessing like a 2020, 2021 Model Three, is that the twenty eighteen Model S may not have the latest computer for full self driving. Oh, that's, uh, that's going to have all the updates. Yeah. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to take advantage of all the autonomous stuff that's coming out from Tesla. So what about, is there a year cutoff? Like could I go up to a 2020 model S and be able to get the FSD functionality? Can I yeah. get the faster charging yeah. with that 2020 <clears throat> yes. model? Yeah, I, I, I think it, this is my personal opinion, but I think I wouldn't buy a, a Tesla before your model year 2020 because they made so many major changes, including the faster charging speeds, hardware three, all of that kind of stuff. So I, that that's just my personal thought. I, I I totally understand and I respect buying used cars because you're letting some other sucker like drive it off the lot and take all the hit, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's the way it goes. But, but um, I just, I don't think I'd buy a 2018 especially, maybe a 2019 if I was sure it had hardware three in it, but I would be looking at a 2020 and I would pay the extra money for the newer model year. Yeah, the big concern I have with used EVs is only the battery. That's the only thing that I care about. And the deal with the Model S is, especially 100 or an equivalent, it's it's got such a gigantic battery. It's got 400 miles or so new range. So even if it loses a chunk, you still got like 350, which is as much as a new Model 3 has. Yeah, I, I will say with the Model 3, if you're, it, it's it really like I like the Model 3 better than the Model S because I'm very much a sports car kind of guy. And I really love how small the Model 3 is and it feels fast. Even we just have the single motor one, you know, we don't even have a high rent Model 3, but it just feels fast because it's low. And like I'm, I'm making a transition here. So I want it to feel as much like a car and not yeah. like I'm driving a computer as possible. Right. Then you've yeah. picked the perfect car. Yeah. So tell me. So walk walk okay. me through. Walk me okay. through this. So so in terms of superchargers, right? That's that's just dirt simple because on your app, you put your credit card information in, and then there's never, there's not even like a kiosk or anything. Whoa, like that whoa, whoa! So I got to give Elon my credit card information. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have you to do that when you well buy the car. Should. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> give the man your credit card. But but anyway, <laughs> once you associate that with your like, app, it like you just take it out of the thing, plug it into your car, and it just works. You never even it's just magic. Uh, as far as at home is concerned, you have two options basically. You can either do 120 charging, 110 charging with just a regular like plug it in the wall thing that goes at about three to four miles an hour hour charging speed very slow um if you want to have a reasonable chance of charging if you're just driving it once in a while that could be okay if you want to have a reasonable chance of charging it up uh you'll want to hook it up to a 250 or 240 volt sorry um which the easiest way to do it is just to split off a dryer thing uh that's what i've got is just a box that's in my dryer that splits my dryer and the charger uh or you can install something outside just put in a separate two 240 line um and then it'll charge up 
you know, I don't know. It's it's overnight. I never know exactly. 30 miles an hour, 30 to 40 yeah, miles an hour, 30, depending 40, on the car. Yeah, so it'll go fast. It, yeah. It'll charge up in eight hours overnight, you know. Which that's, that would be plenty. Yeah, yeah. for yeah, your use you, case, that's yeah, a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so, that, you, so it, what if it's raining and I want to charge outside? Is that I it, do that matter. at my okay. I do that at my mom's house okay. all the time. It pours in Washington, D.C. every time I go. And I just have you just got to wear rubber gloves. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very smart. The, the connector is actually far inside. And the way the the, the charging port is, it, it covers it. And because it's so far in, I don't know, it's it's just I've never I've been an issue. Complete, yeah, I've yeah. plugged it in with a completely wet connector before and been like, this is a terrible idea. And it just does fine. It doesn't care. Any what do you have to do for maintenance? When do you get the uh, at what intervals do you get the oil change? <laughs> Zero. Every 7,500 <laughs> miles, get that oil change, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, for when, us, it, it, windshield ahead, washer Ron, fluid. Yeah. Windshield washer yeah. fluid. That's the thing that's the most annoying maintenance issue. <laughs> yeah. It's and like, tires. Oh, yeah. No, so we I'm have a. It's like, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For So we have our Model Y, our 2021 Model Y. We have 60,000 miles on it. The only thing I've had to do is tires and windshield washer fluid. That's it. There is no recommended uh, like service checkup with Tesla. Really, they just give you the car and then they put you on your merry way. And, I, and I've known a lot of people that own Teslas that the only thing that they have to do is tires and windshield washer fluid. So, yeah, yeah so I too. know that tires have been a higher frequency for a lot of uh for, for Tesla, mm -hmm. they're, they're heavier cars, right? What, no, uh, what would you say? it's not heavier. It's because I tend to burn rubber with them. They're so oh. much fun to accelerate. They're That's very the easy to drive <laughs> yeah. fast. Yes. yes. So how, like how many miles will, will, about what 30. intervals do you have to change, change tires? About 30. Yeah. I have performance okay. P zeros on mine and I, and I've had to change one mine every like 20 to 30,000 miles, but I also, I also drive it. I drive it with spirit. None of that. If you're a total gearhead and motorhead, and all you love to do is just open up the hood and tinker around in your car, you're going to hate this car because there's none of that. I mean, it just you just get in and it works, and you never have to worry about it, and it doesn't cost money because nothing really goes wrong with it. It's an electric motor. Did you see that report from Consumer Reports that they came out with uh, about a week ago, Brandon, where they they had like the five and ten year costs of a Tesla? Yeah, over five to ten years, Tesla is the number one cheapest car to own over five, beating Toyota, Honda, et cetera, et cetera. And that's sort of like the reason why is exactly what we're describing is because there's barely anything to fix and anything that does go wrong, Tesla will take care of within warranty and then it's never an issue ever again. Uh, and they come to you and they fix it. And that's one of the main reasons why. But EVs naturally just have an advantage from a maintenance perspective because yeah. there's just nothing. There's nothing breaks. There's nothing there to break. I mean, if you're going mm. faster. You're going to brake harder. I would assume you hardly ever use your brakes. Right. It's like you just you the, the brakes last forever. I I don't even know. Do you know anybody who's ever replaced their Tesla brakes? Unless no. you're a race car driver. I mean, if you we had a guy come in and replace his at two hundred and sixty thousand for the first yeah. time miles, yeah. but that's because when when the car slows down, it doesn't use brakes. It uses regen braking. So it puts the motor in reverse. Uh, this is like a very stupid way of describing it. Puts the motor in reverse, and then it uses that friction to slow down the car, and that recharges the battery. You only really use the brakes in emergency situations or if you're driving like a maniac. I remember when I when I drove John's and I I didn't like I didn't zero research I I hadn't even watched a Tesla video before I got into John's and like it scared me the first time like, yeah something's wrong something's wrong here I don't know what it is you, something's it, wrong and again it goes the opposite direction if you drive that thing for a couple of weeks and you go to a gas car you're like what is wrong with this car it's not stopping it's terrifying yeah. dude I I had to rent I rented a gas car like I think it was like a year after driving one. And I was in California. I think I, I rented like a, uh, what was it? Like a tiny little uh, Honda, I forget which one it was. But I let go of the gas uh, as I'm coming to the stops uh, at a stoplight and the car just kept going. <laughs> And, the car, and I'm like, what's going on? Why? It felt like I was in an out of control, like runaway train. I'm like, oh shit, right. I have to press the brake. So like I 1000% connect with what you just said, just completely the opposite way. And I'm curious to see if you'll experience that too. Like, you know, depending on how often you drive it and how much you like the driving dynamics, I bet you'll experience that too. After a while, you do definitely get used to it. And I prefer it because I, you don't really have to just like you kind of forget that the brakes even there. It's just it's one pedal driving. It comes to full stop when you let go and everything. Uh, I prefer it, uh, truly just because it just makes it a lot easier and it's and it's you, it's a lot more responsive too. How how accurate is um, the car at telling me how 
much a full battery range is. <laughs> yeah. Not not very. <laughs> it's it's optimistic. It, but there the good thing is there's a trip meter. So so if it says 300 miles you're not going to get 300 miles at least if you don't drive it. If you drive 35 without any stop signs or any traffic lights sure you'll get 300 miles but you won't. But there's a trip meter and it like brings up a full screen and it shows you your trip plan and exactly where you are and if you're like above or below and that one I trust because it's dead on. It's really, really accurate. And that'll tell you, you like you'll enter trip at you know twenty seven miles left on your battery or something like that. And so you can be very confident. I have a formula. So, oh, that well, you can there you use. Go. What's your formula? Yeah. So I, I definitely want that. So here, here's here's my concern then by hearing that from you, John, is that mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go buy a used car. I right. want to know how much the battery has lost oh no 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 it's week. it's it's not that it's just it's always optimistic when you buy the car day one it's always optimistic so use what as far as what's your formula? what he means so what he means is like like let's say when you buy the brand the, the model s brand new in 2017 and it says right. 300 miles of range uh depending on your driving style like let's say you drive let's say you drive like a somebody who follows the law to the to a t you will get within 5% of that mileage is my experience of like the estimated miles on the battery, uh, especially if you're driving it in like, you know, 60 to 80 degree weather, uh, there's no rain, there's no heavy winds, you'll get within 5% of the rated range. If you drive like uh, a regular person, you'll get within 10 to 15% of that rated range. Uh, within that, if you if you drive like a maniac, you'll be within twenty percent of that range. Uh, so but, that's the but way. But the range so, goes down, so it's not like the car today is telling you whatever that original mileage was. There's some percentage less, so it's not lying to you in the sense of it's still telling you it has the original mileage. It knows that the battery's degraded, so it's not it's not it's not sitting there going like, yeah, you still have three hundred miles. It's going like, no, yeah, you're now. It like won't have the original exactly, so yeah, it will be adjusted yeah. down to that what yeah. it is. But depending on how fast you drive it, if you drive it in rain, if you drive it in cold, uh, and whatever else. So so like the the way to think about it is in the worst case scenario, like like say zero degree weather, you're driving like a maniac and you have your heat bumping and it's windy and it's snowing, you'll get 50% of the range. So if it says 200 miles, plan for 100. In a best case scenario, uh, it'll be very close to the 200. Okay, so let me let me put this into like the perspective that I'm looking at when I'm going to look at this used car. So this we'll look at this one I looked at today is 2018. Yeah. It said at 73% battery, it had... I think 270,000, uh, 270, <laughs> 70 miles. So that thing full is rated for 300 miles, right? So is that when I fill it up and it says 300 miles, is that true to it? Or is that true to the battery that was, that no, was that's, that's true, to it, that's true, true to, to it now. That's true to it. True yeah. to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. So I can know what the full battery is range yep. is today when i go look at a used vehicle that's important correct yeah. under okay. ideal conditions with a fifty thousand dollar car if i drive it for a little bit if i buy a new one and drive it for a little bit and don't like it then i'm going to end up losing probably fifteen thousand dollars on it but if i drive this thing for a little bit and end up not liking it um then i'm probably only going to lose what three four five thousand dollars on it so there's not there's not a whole lot of downside i feel like unless the thing blows up on me but what you guys are promising me is that it's not going to blow up on me not going to happen yeah. i'm so, willing to stake my reputation knock on wood <laughs> 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 i should have never said that david edit this out <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to stake farzad's reputation too oh look thank how, you buddy I, yeah. <laughs> so what has surprised you so far with the two times you've driven an electric car what has what has stood out well the i mean the biggest thing that everyone says when they get in tesla it's fun to drive like right the acceleration my wife doesn't care anything about a quick car anything about handling i've had bmws before She's uh, she's drove one of my little like a 430 series I had that was really quick nice. two door awesome car. She doesn't care, right? She got into the to Tesla today and she's like, I'm very surprised I like this as much as I like it. Um, and uh, I mean she she liked the acceleration, uh, whatever. But she uh, I think she really liked the. Uh, it seemed like she really liked the 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 braking too, the non braking. Whatever she, uh, I think she would get used to that. She also liked uh, a lot of the features that that were in it. Um, so I, I think that she's 
this is me saying it today after us just looking at it, but I think she's probably going to like it. A lot of the features of that or uh, model Y, if we would get that later on, um, I think she's going to like that more than even I would. Um, but I like a lot of different cars, a lot of different kinds of cars too. So uh, she wants to get in one and just drive one car um, and be used to it. And I think uh, with her having the experience of driving this S uh, whenever she wants to, I, I think that she is going to be more open to buying um, a Y later on and that being her car that she drives. That's, that's my, that's my read on her just from today, that today's experience. And that, that was surprising to me. And it was also surprising that she liked the model S better than the model three, cause usually she's not for, she's more functionality than she is the more mm -hmm. luxury flashy kind of thing. And I feel like the S is, is more luxurious, uh, luxurious and it's more flashy, but it's also just, it's just a, a better ride. And it's, it's, it's obvious. Um, whenever you, you look at the car and the size of it compared to the model three, it's just a, it's just a much nicer car. So that, that surprised me because I thought I was going to be more open to the model three. And I thought she was going to want the model three more than the model S. But when we looked at them just side by side, it was like, it's, it's almost obvious that the model S is the way to go. Yeah. I think what one thing to do too, for like a, like a cute date, uh, with a model S so you could put the back seats down, you can fit a, you can fit one of those like full size beds in the back so that they have a lot of camping stuff for the model S. So cool thing to do would be like to go out into like the, the wilderness or something and do that. You can have camp mode as well in the car. So you can turn on camp mode, which, uh, you know, leaves on the vents and, you know, keeps the, it's kind of like dog mode, but it's camp mode, they call it. And it just keeps it a climate control. And then the whole uh, roof is glass. And so you can like see the stars while you just hang out and have a good time, you know, put on the stereo, listen to whatever you want. It's just a cool idea, you know, a little bit that versatile, is, especially yeah, plugged cool. in as well. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, and we got yeah. to do that because we have a five year old. We have to get away from him as much as possible. Exactly. Yeah. I've done there it before. Go. We we've even done it on our road trips. We just like screw staying in a hotel. We just like do we have a blow up mattress for the back of the Model Y, and we just blow yeah. it up and sleep in it, and it's really pretty. You look up at the stars; it's beautiful. Yeah, the camp yeah. mode stuff is super underrated because yeah. it's literally like you have it a hotel on wheels. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Climate and control. It, it, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. and I've I've stopped at places where everybody else stops in the gas cars and they have to turn the engines off, and so they're all steamed up, and you wake up and you're refreshed. It's like seventy degrees. It's perfect temperature no matter what it is yeah. outside. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. It's awesome. So, yeah, awesome, dude. I'm so excited for to get your reaction. I, I am so excited. I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> to get your like one week check in, one month check in. Yeah. Should, should we do this again after a while just to kind of like, re I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, let's, well, you let's know I can't in a month. This, so yeah, we well, know I can't have this talk on my channel. So obviously, I, if we're going to talk yes. about it, I'll just come on you guys' channel and there do we it. Go. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. Done. So, we'll, we'll do a touch base uh, a month after ownership and then a, a six month touch and then we'll do something cool. like that or a three month touch or something. Super. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, Great Brandon, idea. Brandon and I can actually get together and like meet up in person and do the, the interview with you, Farzad. So that'll be fun. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, whenever you guys have uh, questions about a 2002 Ford Taurus, you know who to call. <laughs> and then I can just talk you through your next Dude, week. there was plenty of time in my life when that would have sounded perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. So when I get my Taurus, I'll hit you up. Sound good? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, my next, That's my next car. That's my next car. I know about that. <laughs> Okay, All right, cool. perfect. Can't wait. <laughs> awesome. Cars, questions answered. Taurus edition. Taurus edition. Taurus edition. All right.